So we started organizing in Hacienda, so we just, which was just turned over by, uh, by the Department of Grand Reform to go into the workers. Uh, there was a need for everything because literally the, when the Hacienda pulls out, it pulls out everything. It's like a huge problem and you don't know where to start. And the danger was with our group, we wanted to do, help them with everything. So we ended up uh, at a certain time doing health projects, yes. daycare, education, I know, I know. All, all things. Yeah, you, you, yes. yeah, we have been yes. filming yes. that. You're now far beyond that, beyond that stage. And I yeah. guess one of the projects that really impressed me was your Rock Kong project. Yeah. Because I had several projects, I had several locations to film, uh, like inside Mosha, and you had your pumps there. Yeah. And everywhere else, and uh, when you showed me your footage, I was very, very impressed. Oh, big problem, ah, muli na yu. So nagproposal kami yas ang information para salamat yani ang mga tete. Ang information na bulig sa amon. Kada so mga six hundred six ah six hundred it ng meters sa. The hydraulic ram is an automatic device that utilizes the energy contained in a flow of water running through it to lift a small volume of this water to a higher level. The volume of water being lifted ranges from 5 to 40 percent of the water passing through the ram. The remaining 60 to 95 percent is waste water and returned to the stream. Rams can be used for pumping drinking or irrigation water from a spring or stream to a tank or reservoir at a higher level. A steady and reliable supply of water is required with a fall sufficient to operate the ram. For the 8 ram, this means a minimum fall of around 1 meter and a minimum flow of 8 liters per minute. Favorable conditions are mostly found in hilly and mountainous areas. The aid ram will pump an appropriate amount of water to a height from about 20 to 30 times the supply head with an efficiency of about 60 to 70 percent. Therefore, the higher the supply head, the higher the ram can pump. And, uh, but our technology all centers around the ram pump. Yes, and you've sent that to other countries. Yes, yeah. um, we just came back from Cambodia. Yes. We did three uh, ram pumps at one side. No, Mark has um, your map there, your international map there, has sporadic spots where you send out yes. your pumps. Is it just a pump? Because I know you have other technologies yeah. here. No, that's about but the ramp pump. pump. The ramp pump seems to be the favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Why is it the favorite? It's unique. We have a... Uh, this is also a little bit of a problem of appropriate technologies. There are many groups involved, also tech, uh, mostly universities. That's why it never developed as uh, mature technologies which are acceptable to, to any, anybody. What we want, that's our philosophy. Also the poor want quality products. They, they don't just want things which are combined with ropes and uh, like Goma and then... Uh, to, and they are willing to pay for that. How? That's another story with credit or whatever. So this, this was our starting point with the, the ramp pump. We, we started with drawings from books we got at the time. Wala pa ng internet. Yes, I know. I know. It's a long time ago. I was there. <laughs> so it started like that with fittings and the things we could get from the hardware. And then we said, uh, uh, we have seen many of those pumps which are not working in the world. That's why it's a unique pump. Why hasn't it spread? No? I, imagine you can pump up water to high elevations with, without any energy. The people can maintain it. No? Why is it not What's energy? the water level? The minimum water level? You, you need free flowing water. You, you can't just get water from a well or what. It should be a spring, a stream, or a river. Uh -huh. As in yes. And then it works on uh, conversion of uh, velocity and like, pressure and then pumps it up. And our, our idea was to use spare parts which are available all over, all over the world. That's why the, un the unit is very unique because when we adapt it, for example, to Afghanistan, it's, it's now manufactured in Afghanistan. Right? It's a special shop for the ramp pump already in Afghanistan, run by the Afghan people. So you don't have to, you just bring the prototype. Yeah, it was really a process because we want to do it seriously. It's, it's a waste of energy if we just teach anybody to make a ramp pump because uh, 
So what we did was we went to Afghanistan, did three pilot sites from the dangerous circumstances. Now, now at the moment it's really very dangerous. So we can't do that. We can't keep on coming back from yes. the Philippines and then... Yes. Uh, there is an international slogan among water people who say no pumps should cross borders. This is a technology which can be done or made in any country. So also the Philippines, we can produce hand pumps, rope pumps, yes. rope pumps, anything. No? Why don't we do that? So we also, uh, after the pilot site, we kept on communicating and about the concept of, uh, not, not from a business concept, because then you would export, no? we, we can export if you want. We wanted to have them, like us, make their own pump. No? And so they sent over three uh, Afghan people, two of them uh, really technical and one in engineering. And they stayed here for 45 days, they made their own ramp pumps, they installed their own ramp pumps, and they went back. And it was our hope that it would succeed in something. And that was October 2007. By December already we got pictures via the, of course, uh, email. And there was already a specially built shop for the ramp pump, which we never thought that would really happen. It was, of course, it was their dream while they were it's here. It's like giving birth. Yes. It's like I was very excited about it. I never expected there would be a shop for them. It's like being a father. Yes. You, know, yeah. you, you see this is a legacy, it's not just yeah. here. It has to be and, and it's spreading. You know? uh, they built five ramp pump systems themselves. And I'm communicating, I'm chatting with the people in northern Afghanistan. Maybe that's exactly why the internet is valuable. Because when you started out, you said that there were yeah. ramp pump models from the books, you know, like test lab really spread. Yeah. But now with technology and connectivity, So we want to expand, of course, in the Philippines as much as possible. We have installation teams for the ramp pump in Mindanao and Cebu, and they are really moving. They are a group of Christian and Muslims and uh, indigenous uh, people together. Very, very nice. They are very active. And we can supply them with the pumps. No, no problem. We can produce pumps. No? If they work together, there will probably be less war. <laughs> no, they, they, I have been in Sultan Kodarat and there is no development going on. And when you go there, the MILF goes with you, the chief of police from the PNP in, uh, from the uh, city hall wants to go with you because uh, because I'm going up to the Manobo area. So the barangay captain from that area ha hasn't been in that Manobo community. And, and everybody's excited and they have the same wishes of water, uh, sanitation, some electricity supply, uh, cell phone uh, signals. Well, that's good to know because it's, good. it's always best to know that man is fundamentally decent. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes we have our doubts, but you know, this comes to core yeah. and we are assured yes. that people can come together for a good cause. So, oh, thank you. Yeah, you've not been disillusioned for 20 years. No. You've put a stake here, you've set up your home. And this is your home now, and so we're glad that you are Kabayan. Thank you. Thank you.